There is a, a big opportunity uh, in the U.S., uh, as there is uh, um, in many regions of the world. Tiffany, it was more a question of uh, timing, and it was also a question of strategy. For us, uh, in terms of jewelry, we had Bulgari, which is a beautiful Italian brand, but it's true that this Sleeping Beauty, that was uh, Tiffany, and uh, we know something uh, a little bit about this, uh, this business, was, uh, was there was on the market, everybody knew that one day it was going uh, for sale, and uh, we saw the opportunity there also because pulling it out of the stock market in the US where you have to constantly uh, justify what you did in the previous uh, quarter and try to explain what you were going to do in the next one makes that the teams were a little bit out of breath. We gave a long horizon to the teams and now already we see the results, so it's, uh, it's a pretty good one, I must say. What about China? Because we know the Chinese consumer has been extremely important for the luxury sector. Things, of course, have been difficult because of the pandemic there. Um, do you see growth coming back and the opportunities still existing in China? Absolutely. Uh, growth never really left us uh, in China. Even uh, during the pandemic, we were very fortunate, but it was, uh, I must say, a, a genius coup by my father to open these magnificent stores very early on in China. Uh, since 1992, we are present in China, and uh, so they've seen our brands, uh, you know, have really big and, and, and uh, impressive temples there in, in the middle of their, you know, shopping streets. Um, at the time, it was uh, unusual to have such big stores, but now it's paying off, and I think also they know that we are friends of their country, that we have a very good relationship. We went countless times there. Unfortunately, not in a recent future because of what's happening, but we cannot wait to go back.